In this episode of the Globe News Report, a surge of boat purchases has influenced the Michiana Boat Show. Journalist Marshall King tackles the story of Mennonite pacifist Michael M.J. Sharp. And we'll learn more about an ongoing theft in the Goshen community. It's all coming up right here on the Globe News Report. In the Globe Studios on the campus of Goshen College, I'm Dante Stanton. And I'm Amelia Lee on the Globe News Report. Well, Amelia, a very special holiday is coming up pretty soon. It's right around the corner. Has uh, Cupid shot you with an arrow yet? Dante, I have hope that Cupid will swing by real soon. But if I were to post on Facebook today, it would say it's complicated. Do you have any Valentine's Day plans? I do. I'm fortunate enough to have uh, a special someone this year. Uh, and they're not named Ben and Jerry's. So uh, I'm pretty excited about the holiday. It might be cold and snowy outside, but the summer is just around the corner. And with summer comes boating season. I caught up with some local boaters at the Michiana Boat Show this weekend, and I learned more about the boat boom. Ever since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, companies around the world have been struggling to sell their products at a normal rate. Surprisingly, boat sales are the exception. The Michiana Boat Show has experienced an increase in sales, says Kenneth Holder, Boat Show representative. The, the demand went sky high, and we, we were like, wow, this is crazy. It's insane how much the boat sales have increased. You would have thought it would have dropped. It went through the roof. The U.S. boat market bottomed right after the financial crisis, but since 2012, the industry has been in growth mode, with even more growth since the pandemic. So increase in boat sales, uh, especially since the pandemic in 2020, there's been a huge spike in demand from consumers uh, related to boats, everything from pontoons to bass boats. It's difficult for the boat market to keep up with the demand of boats, says John Gibson, boat show representative. We've seen a huge increase in demand from consumers for boats, and it's been really hard for the supply chain to keep up with that. The Michiana Boat Show also struggles to get customers their boats in a timely fashion. Some of these guys are buying boats and waiting six months to get the boat or eight months. So we've had customers buy them last year and still waiting for them and they'll be in this year. Holder reflects on why boat sales have boomed since the start of the pandemic. I think people want to spend time with their family out on the water while this stuff's going on. The Michiana Boat Show allows customers to see their options. So a boat show allows multiple vendors to come together so that families can come and they can check out boats from Starboard Choice Marine. They can visit with Wylands Marina, multiple places. They could see the new ski technology, tubing technology, docks. There's even paddle boats upstairs. So it's a great opportunity to see everything related to the water and then choose the best product for your family. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Amelia Lee. Amelia, we both had a great time exploring the boat show. I can kind of understand why the demand for boats has gone sky high. Some of those boats were big enough to live in. Right? Like, that was my first time ever setting foot on a boat. They're pretty nice, but I can say that I will never in my life take a boat to sea. It's just way too scary. Well, hopefully one day you can conquer your fears. I myself am a big fan of getting out on the water. When we return, we'll take an in-depth look at Marshall King's new book on the Globe News Report. <laughs> Dante, are you familiar with the tragic story of Michael M.J. Sharp? I was familiar with the story, but I had no idea how fascinating it was until I picked up Marshall King's new book, Disarmed. Gabriella Kloppenstein has the story on Disarmed and M.J. Sharp. Marshall King, Elkhart County journalist, recently wrote a new biography, Disarmed, The Radical Life and Legacy of Michael M.J. Sharp. This story covers Sharp's life, a Mennonite peace worker who was killed while investigating violence in the Congo in 2017. I mean, when it happened, I just really felt like this is a really good story. This is a story I felt deeply as a, 
as a Mennonite and Anabaptist and that a lot of other people felt um, the loss of and felt like, you know, this is a story that needs to be told and I'm, I'm, I might be in a position to tell it. And so kind of worked with a family um, to try to undertake that process. When King decided to take on the daunting task of telling the life story of M.J. Sharp, he began his research quickly after finding out about Sharp's death. I talked to friends and I talked to family. I did some travel that first summer of 2017 to gather, to do interviews and gather information and then kept, just kind of kept going and inevitably, I think, talked to more than 100 people for the book. Uh, books primarily, primarily based on interviews, though, uh, what was on his hard drive, his MCC reports, his UN reports, his journals were all huge parts of the book as well. For King, there were many difficult aspects about writing Sharp's life story. Um, I mean, it's a tragic story. It's a poignant story. And um, dealing with the emotion of it, um, dealing with some of what MJ was investigating in the Congo, um, trying to process that as a human and also as a writer, uh, it was, it was, that was hard. And... Um, but it was, but again, it felt like important and even sometimes holy work. Continuing the legacy of MJ Sharp doesn't look the same to everyone. King shares what we can do even in our own lives. Just the risks and the fully engaged way in which MJ lived. Um, not all of us are going to do that. Not all of us are going to go to the other side of the world, but, but we can be bold and have conversations with our neighbors, search for nonviolent and peaceful solutions. And so I think that's something any of us can do no matter where we live. If you are interested in reading Disarmed, The Radical Life and Legacy of Michael M.J. Sharp, visit bookshop.org. Reporting for Globe News, this is Gabriella. Amelia, it's a truly inspiring story and an excellent read as well. I do highly recommend it. I might pick up a copy after this. I went to King's talk at Goshen College and I'm very intrigued. Coming up, our Globe News crew investigates a rash of theft around Indiana and at Goshen College. I came to Goshen thinking that I'd just be acting, but over the course of my four years, I've taken part in all the other facets of the theater, and I think that's helped me gain a wider appreciation for theater as a whole. I mean, it takes all those things that I'm interested in, like design aspects of theater, the environmental studies course I took and it takes my music major and it just focuses it all into theater. Have you ever had anything stolen from your car? No, I, Amelia, I've got to say I've been pretty lucky in the past but my parents have been victims as well. A string of catalytic converter thefts have been going on in the area. Alyssa McDonald has more on this developing story. Hide your valuables. Lock your car doors. We all understand the basics of car safety, but what about the things that you can't hide? Cars around the state have been experiencing theft of their catalytic converters. These catalytic converters that are, that are required uh, in order to be able to filter the exhaust of vehicles safely. Chad Coleman, director of Campus Safety, explains why someone would want a catalytic converter. Uh, they're very rare. Uh, they're worth a lot of money. Goshen College student Annika Fisher is one of five students on campus to experience this theft. I eventually um, met up with Chad and a police officer from Goshen and filled out a report with them. And Chad showed me security camera footage of the vehicle um, with the thief circling the parking lot out by the dorms. Um, and then it shows them stopping and someone gets out and walks up to my car. One particular kind of car is a likely target. And all cars that had theft here were all Prius, mm -hmm. uh, all the same, you know, car make and model, uh, different years. Um. Five Priuses had their catalytic converters stolen over the course of a weekend. Although it's hard to deter theft, Coleman has some ideas. If you have a Prius, uh, look into one of those protectors. I would say park them in a light. Uh, the biggest tip and what I get from if there's things on the inside of your vehicle is lock them in the trunk. The local police are continuing to monitor the situation. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Alyssa McDonald. These thefts have certainly led to an increased safety mindset amongst myself and other Goshen College students. I'll do anything to protect my vehicle, Amelia. Dante, I'm just glad that I don't have a Prius. I feel like my Honda will be perfectly okay. 
Up next, we'll find out what options you have to get your Valentine a nice locally purchased item. Goshen students enjoy an amazing record of success. What's the secret? It starts with hands-on learning experiences. Whether it's a service project in Peru, a sustainability semester at our environmental learning center, or broadcasting for our award-winning radio station, it adds up to life-changing perspectives and real-world skill development that makes a difference to future employers. And it's all available at a campus that makes everyone feel at home. Come hang out with us and see for yourself. Schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Welcome back to the Globe News Report. Joining me today is Emma Eitzen from 10,000 Villages. Emma, it's great seeing you today. Did you make it here with all of the snow? Okay. Yeah, yeah, a little, little rough on the roads. A little rough. Good. <laughs> good to hear. I'm glad. Yeah. So, Emma, Valentine's Day is coming up right around the corner. Does 10,000 Villages have any unique items that you're selling for the special day? We are selling uh, lots of heart shaped items. We have some earrings, we have uh, some of the these Kesey Stone dishes. Um, they are very special to the store as well as the artists and partners who make them. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's so cool. And as a local business, I feel like Valentine's Day is a pretty big holiday for you guys. Mm -hmm. Are you running any special specials for the holidays and what are they? We will be having a buy one, get one 50% off throughout the whole store. Uh, this will include jewelry, which is a big hit for a lot of, for our store at least. Um, but there's also some other gifts, you know, for guys as well. We got some office trinkets as well as just kind of uh, different things to play with or have around the house. For sure. Yeah. And do you have any best selling items from last year? What items do you anticipate to be those best sellers this year? We have some jewelry, as I mentioned earlier. A lot of those have sold really well. Um, we also have these sari flowers here. These were really good sellers last year. They're great and they're sustainable. They're made from uh, recycled sari material. Um, and yeah, they were a great price point, about $8.99, and they just last forever. Uh, so those are really, really good sellers. Yeah, and they're really beautiful, uh, just like the different designs on them. I really like that. So we always talk about what the girls want for Valentine's Day. What gift ideas do you have for the guys as well as the gals? For the gals, I always suggest jewelry. Um, but those who don't wear jewelry, we also have lots of self-care items. We have these uh, Soup of Success soap uh, or shower melts. They, you pretty much just put them on the shower floor while you take a shower and they release aromatics. Um, we also have, you know, rice bags. These uh, you can put in the microwave and then give them to, or put them around your neck, on your legs. They're great for both guys and girls. I love to use mine at home. Just put it on my legs. My legs get cold really easily. Um, we also have something that I like to play with a lot. It's this 100-year calendar. Uh, you can just kind of figure out, you know, what day is my birthday going to be in 2050? Um, so I'm always playing with this in the store, and it's just a great desk item uh, for, the, for the guys or gals. Um, we also have some socks as well. Those are really good sellers. It's cold. It's the winter. Definitely always can use a new pair of socks. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And they're so unique to all the items you guys have. I feel mm -hmm. like you can't really find those anywhere else. And Valentine's Day, it can get pretty hectic. When do you think people should start shopping for their special person? Probably sooner rather than later. Uh, we always have those last minute people that come in and shop. Uh, but the sooner you come in, the more likely more options you have, more choices uh, for that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And you brought some of your items in today. Do you think you could explain the significance of a couple of them? Yeah, um, like I showed earlier, we have some Conscious Step socks. Uh, these are great for just keeping your feet warm. I have probably about three or four pairs now, and I wear them all the time. But they support different causes. We have some that support, uh, that provide meals. Uh, there's others that, uh, like, you know, they provide relief. Some provide books. Uh, uh, they all go, to, the purchase supports the effort towards uh, whatever is on the sock. Um, we have some that are for LGBTQ, um, Black Lives Matter, things like that. Uh, we also have these fun salt and pepper shakers. They're mushroom. Uh, I got some for my brother for Christmas because he really likes to mushroom hunt. So they're perfect for the kitchen. 
um, and they are wonderful. They're made in India, uh, made of a stone uh, for that. My favorite thing is this little elephant here. Put your sunglasses on, on him, set it on your desk so you're not losing your glasses, whether there's your sunglasses or uh, your regular glasses and things like that. So. Yeah, thank you, Emma. These are all so amazing. Like all these gifts are so, so unique. I love it. Thank you for joining us on the Globe News Report this morning. I look forward to shopping at 10,000 Villages for some Valentine's Day gifts. That's all for this edition of the Globe News Report. Make sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at 91 the Globe and our website, globeradio.org, for more local content. Until next time, this has been the Globe News Report.